Looking live, presented by Old Venice Pizza Company, Athletics Director Ross Bjork talks about the football season thus far and what our fans should expect as the new norm. We also talk homecoming, square jam, and SEC Nation taking place in the Grove this Saturday. We will also take your questions for Ross, so be sure and get them in using hashtag AskRoss or by emailing us at studio18 at olemiss.edu. Now live from Studio 18, here's Senior Associate Athletics Director Michael Thompson and Ole Miss Athletics Director Ross Bjork. Good afternoon and welcome back to Studio 18 Live presented by Old Venice Pizza Company. This fall, we're airing the show on Wednesdays before home games so you can get all of your game day questions answered by our Athletics Director Ross Bjork. There are two different ways you can submit questions. Uh, You can use Twitter and the hashtag AskRoss or you can go to OleMissSports.com at the very top of the page, there's an Ask Ross link. Just click that, and you'll be taken to a form where you can submit questions. So, Ross, thanks for being here again. Great to be back. Yeah. Glad we're at home. Another home homecoming. Game. It's awesome. Um, before we talk about homecoming and all the, the fun stuff going around, yeah. or going on this, this week, um, College Station, that was, that was pretty insane. The largest crowd in SEC history and, and in Texas yeah. history. Talk, talk a little bit about that. You know, I, I was fortunate enough uh, in my – previous uh, life at Missouri to play there twice. Our teams played there twice. And so when, when Texas A&M got into the SEC, I knew that they were a perfect fit in terms of their fan base, in terms of their infrastructure. You know, the size of their university is, is tremendous. And so to see it again and to see their stadium expansion and, and renovation that they've done, it's just, it really is a, one of the most unique places in college athletics. It's choreographed. They have midnight yell the night before you know, 40, 50,000 people there, uh, learning cheers that will be uh, displayed the next day. Uh, really, no one else does that. And so I think there's a lot of things that we can all learn from the atmosphere at Texas A&M, from the, really the time they step foot on campus as a freshman. You're an Aggie, and you're an Aggie for life, and that carries over to their game day atmosphere. And so it was a precious uh, win to walk away from that atmosphere 110,000 people, they all, most of them left early, except our fans. And so that was a, a cool thing to, to be able to see our team uh, kind of seize that moment. Yeah, you know, an environment like that where it is going to be so full, I mean, when, when we have maybe 5% of the crowd, if that, to jump out to a big lead, you know, a big lead, you, you want to kind of silence some of that, but it, it didn't. I mean, that was so, that was shocking to me, is they, especially they, that. They stayed in. Yeah, they Obviously, were in. Obviously, our start helped, and, and yes. we had to have that kind of start. Otherwise, if you really give them momentum, oh, man. you know, then it's obviously a, a big uphill climb. But they stayed with it. I mean, even in the third quarter, you know, up, up three touchdowns, their, their crowd was still trying to yeah. fight their team and will their team back in it. And, you know, we almost uh, had a few glimpses where they started to get back in, but then we made plays and, and shut it down. So, bit. absolutely. No doubt. So this weekend, um, it's homecoming week, and, right. and we posted a video yesterday on OleMissFB.com, um, kind of in our series of three right. things. And there's going to be an email that goes out immediately after this show that's right. it's also got that yeah. video in it. Um, we've got an infographic up on OleMissFB right now um, about these three things. So let's kind of start. And the first one is a little different. And this first one was about expectations. Yeah. So talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's kind of layered, if you will, uh, around expectations, uh, but it's also safety. You know, we we had a great moment against Alabama. We beat the number one team. You know, our defense, you know, saved the game there at the end with Sinquez, you know, having the interception with 38 seconds, you know, left on the clock. And so it's layered in, in safety, but also expectations. So the safety piece of it is, you know, it's simply dangerous to rush the field. Obviously, we knew we couldn't stop, you know, 55 56,000 of our fans from rushing the field. So we tried to make Alabama's team safe, make the officials safe, make our team safe, and then really just make the, the fans safe. Um, but we really need to stop that practice. We, we need to end that. And so that's the safety piece of it and the goalpost piece. That's dangerous when those things fall. And so we have to have that in mind. But then the expectation piece of it is we have to have higher expectations for our performance, which means if we knock off a number one team, first of all, we're number three in the country, right. so we might get the field stormed on us, which I don't know if that's ever happened. But the expectation piece of it is if we knock off Alabama or Auburn or LSU, you know what? Hey, let's celebrate in the stands. Let's act like we've been there before and really just have a higher presence about our fan base and about our, our team to say that was expected. We expected our team to perform at the highest level. And to me, that needs to apply to all of our sports. We should expect 
that a new normal that we've tried to create and will continue to create, and we're not even close to being where we think we, we can be, is that we perform at the highest level. So if we knock off a number one team, if we knock off uh, a top five team, that, that's expected. And we need to find other ways to celebrate. And we can help with that by creating some new traditions, sure. singing the alma mater, whatever it might be, those are the things that we need to focus on. And I think that's what we, what we mean by expectations you know, for the program. So it's on the field, it's off the field, it's, it's our students, it's our fans, it's all of us that we expect to perform at the highest level. We're in the SEC. That means you're, you're performing on the biggest stage and we need to have that mentality. Yeah, and I think that I think that that game in particular and the way that it, the way that it ended, um, that celebration right. was, was nearly necessary to, to almost like cathartic to, to kind of push that into the past. Yeah. And, and this is the new norm and the new normal, yeah. like you said. And, and, and again, we want to celebrate that moment. Right. Absolutely. And if we were up by three touchdowns and the game ends, do we storm the field? Maybe not. Right. You know, the Egg Bowl game in 2012, that was like a big exhale. Yes. you know, for our fan base after what had, what had taken place. And so you're going to have some of those moments, but I think we all just have to learn and, and take the, the safety and the expectation piece uh, top of mind to say we just, we just need to, you know, perform better in, uh, and not do those things moving forward. So homecoming week is always exciting. I mean, it brings people back um, to campus, and we've kind of created a little bit of a, of a homecoming week tradition in Square Jam. And so yeah. when you think homecoming, a lot of times you think football, mm -hmm. but, but basketball is here and the hoops teams right. will be, be on the square. Talk a little bit about Square Jam. Well, first of all, we need to thank the city, the city of Oxford for allowing us to take up a, a big footprint, you know, right in front of City Hall. So that, you know, Mayor Patterson, you know, we love our relationship with the city. And so he, he allowed us to, to do this. And so we need to thank him first. And then, you know, the infrastructure to, to build it, you know, the city workers, the police, you know, blocking off streets. So I think it's a great way to end the homecoming parade. You know, homecoming parade ends on the square. It's a great way for fans who uh, maybe go out to dinner later that night to have something to do, you know, for an hour or so, starting at 6:30. And so I love the fact that your team, our creative team, came up with that idea uh, in 2012, and we've been able to pull it off now three years in a row and continue mm -hmm. it and make it grow and make it better. Now we have a sponsor in Trustmark Bank, and so that helps again the identity of Square Jam and, and make it really just a big time atmosphere. And it's great for our players. Our players need that energy. They need to see our fans passionate about basketball. And then, you know, just like the Grove on game day carries over to the stadium, we have to have Square Jam carry over to the rest of the season where, you know, our teams are being supported at the highest level. So I think it's a great way to, to get to know our teams. And people need to get to get to know our teams this year. We're going to have exciting basketball, both men and women, yes. totally new rosters, tons of talent. And uh, I think the sky's the limit for both these teams, men's and women's basketball. So it's it's just free. And it's free. It's free to it's families. Obviously free. Very family friendly event. Um, free. Lots of different right. stuff. Dunk contests, three right. point contests. Right. SEC Network is actually going to be there, Network. not just guest judging it, but they're going to be covering a lot of it. Correct. So uh, it's going to be great footage. Again, great getting footage. our getting our brand out there nationally. This is one of those unique events that does that uh, for Ole Miss. So the third one um, is SEC Nation. Right. So SC Nation is this traveling uh, kind of right. live game right. day show, very similar to, to ESPN's right. college game day, which we had here in our last home game. Um, but talk about that coming here and, and what some of that means. You know, the, the best thing we can do right now is point people to OleMissFB.com sure. so they can see the infographic, they can see the map, they can see the footprint. Schedule. Really the same type of structure. Luckily, we have a blueprint mm -hmm. for college game day where – we're working with the folks who have tents uh, along the Walk of Champions, along the, the Grove stage, and working with all of them to uh, accommodate SEC Nation. But again, the exposure, you know, SEC Network is in 65 million homes right now. Right. And so to have that two hour commercial, you know, live from the Grove with all the personalities that are gonna be here, Paul Feinbaum, you know, being one of them, he's pretty famous, uh, especially within the SEC uh, footprint. To have all those people here to, to talk about Ole Miss for two hours and to talk about college football right from our campus, mm -hmm. again, you can't put a price tag on that. And so it's a unique opportunity. Uh, we expect to host these shows on a more frequent basis right. because our football team's performing at a high level and we have the SEC network. And so this is one of those things where, hey, for a couple hours on Saturday, people might be a little bit inconvenienced. The show ends at 11. They'll try to break down as fast as possible, and then our game's at 6. And so I, I think we have plenty of time for people to kind of get back in their, 
in their tailgate mode uh, before uh, you know kickoff that night. Excellent. <clears throat> before we get to some of our fan questions, this is totally off the cuff here. Okay. But uh, yesterday, I mean, speaking of the SEC and the SEC Network, yesterday um, there was a big announcement from the SEC about about the commissioner. Yeah. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. Well, you know, Mike Slive has, I think, set the standard in uh, really college athletics, obviously for, for our conference, but really nationally. If you, if you look at what he's done, um, the, the respect that he has, the character that he has, the integrity that he has, the, the bar has been raised, you know, so high uh, because of Mike Slive. And then you look at our league and how our league has transformed, you know, in his tenure. You know, again, invaluable, invaluable uh, leadership. And, you know, we're going to cherish working with him. I think that was my statement that we put out there. Mm -hmm. Cherish working with him the next, uh, you know, nine months, ten months. But then his legacy beyond that, you know, I think will be remembered, uh, you know, forever because our league now is at a, at a standard that's really unmatched in, in college athletics. So we will miss Mike, but we'll enjoy working with him. He's not going anywhere. Even after that, he'll be a consultant to the league, and uh, his presence will be felt, uh, you know, for a long time. And then he's just a great man. Great leader. Great yeah. guy to be around. You can learn so much in, in his wisdom and how he carries himself. And so uh, we're, we're happy for him. Uh, we wish him the best in his health uh, challenges that, that he does have that are, that are documented, and uh, we know that he'll fight through it. Good deal. Thanks for asking about that. That's, yeah, that's important. That is important. No doubt. Um, so tons of fan, fan questions come in for this episode, uh, and we can't even cover some of them. Uh, we're going to actually move a couple of them to uh, the show from a couple of weeks okay. in a couple of weeks because right. um, they're relevant for uh, games towards the end of the season. Okay. Uh, but we have, we have plenty, uh, and we probably would have covered this one in, the, in kind of the, the initial rundown, the scheduling yeah. idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The football scheduling is a big deal. So we, we announced our schedule yesterday, and Joe um, Joe asked, um, why did the LSU game get moved back to the Saturday before the Egg Bowl next season, and why is our bye at the, at the end of the season? What are your feelings yeah. on this? We've all seen the movie The Matrix, and we don't know what goes into that That's formula. Right. So the scheduling matrix has a lot of variables, right? And so we give our input. We request that the LSU game is around uh, Halloween. You know, this year it kind of – falls in that in that window uh, a little bit before Halloween last year it, it sort of did um, and so we put that request in but then it all flows through a matrix and there's a lot of variables there's LSU variables there's other team variables and so once it kind of goes in there with all of our requests you try to manually move some things around and so we did the best we could uh, to have that the the buy at the end of the season really is a result of having three non-conference agreements that were already in place. We actually tried to move the New Mexico State game um, around, but they had no flexibility on their end. And then if we would have moved them, that would have impacted some conference games. And so there's really no, there's no science behind this. There's really no true formula. You have to really just kind of do it by feel. So it's more of an art than a science, mm -hmm. right? And so that's, that's really what we had to work with. And, you know, the feelings on it are, Everybody in college, athlete, college football next season only has one bye week. That's across the board because we right. play 12 games. Mm -hmm. The way the calendar falls around Labor Day, everyone has the same number of bye weeks, and that's one in I'm college glad football. You brought it up. So okay, it's not an Ole Miss thing. Yeah. It's not an SEC thing. Everyone has one bye week. And so it's basically the calendar gods, the way it, the way it uh, shook out with Labor Day, uh, make us have uh, one, one bye week. And so... That's really the, the nature and the gist of, uh, of what happened with next year's schedule. And there's other teams that have, you know, Mississippi State starts with three of their first five games on the road. Right. And so it's, it's a balancing act, too, with, with all these schedules, and, and that's the way it, uh, it fell through. Jennifer Edens asks, when will Ole Miss join <laughs> some other SEC schools and add an equestrian team? And this, you know, you can answer this in, in a lot of different ways. I mean, but talk about, like, adding sports. Right. The, the most frequent question, this is the first equestrian question that I've right. had. Usually I get men's soccer, I get swimming, and I get gymnastics, women's okay. gymnastics. And, you know, right now we are not in a position to add any more sports. We feel that uh, 18 sports is enough for our program. We feel that we're funding these sports adequately. So if we, if we add sports, we either need to increase our funding or take away right. from something. And we don't want to do that right now. And so adding sports is a is really a formula of Title IX. It's a formula of budgets. It's a formula of facilities. 
you know, right now to build an equestrian facility would take budget, would take space, would take land, yeah. and uh, simply we, we don't have that. And the resources that we do have right now, we want to make sure that our teams are performing at the best right now with what we have. And um, so we're not in a position to add any sports at the, at the present time. It would take horses too. Horses, yeah, it's a whole different like, kind of equipment, right? You know? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a lot and the thing equipment. about equestrian is you don't travel the horses. So when you go, let's say huh. you go to uh, Auburn, who has an equestrian team, you go and ride their horses. You don't take your own wow. horses in equestrian. So, so when the visiting team would come here, we'd have to have the adequate number of horses, right, to host the visiting team. Wow. So that's how it works. Very interesting, um, Jake. Jake asked, and this question we get a lot, right. uh, and, you know, I'm not going to read the entire question, uh, but it's talking about Land Shark, and, and, you know, you can't turn on ESPN right now without, without right. seeing some sort of discussion about our Land Shark defense, and it's becoming really a household, household name. So um, are, we, are we looking into ways to market that we are. more? We are. As you know, Michael, there's a lot of things that we've done, I think, really in the last year, really since last football season. Right. You know, we sat down last summer and said, hey, we need to capitalize on the land shark um, model, if you will, going into the 2013 season. And so we started doing more in-game you know, promotion of the land shark. It's gone to a new level, I think, this year. Obviously, having College Game Day do a special on it, having SEC Nation do a special on it. And, and for us, it's about honoring Tony Fine. It's about showing that our defense is one of the best defenses in the country and the theme of land shark and, and our, really our players buying into that mentality, like we're not going to let anybody get past us, right? We're going to have shark-like mentality, I think, has caught on. And so we do have many more ideas that we'd like to layer into this whole theme. We're working on a few things. As you and I know, the term land shark and the term fins up is owned and licensed by Anheuser-Busch right. around uh, the land shark uh, brewing company. And so there's some challenges there, and we're trying to work through some of those things and, and try to do more around, uh, you know, what Landshark means to, to Ole Miss. Good deal. Um, ben, and I won't read this entire one either, but um, talks about basically our younger Rebels, our, our, right. our young alumni, our recent graduates, and, and um, there's a lot of demand for our program right now and for tickets. So uh, do we have any kind of pricing plan for recent graduates to help make it more affordable to stay involved? The best thing that we have uh, right now is Rebels25. Rebels25.com is our website for that. They can join for a $25 membership for a young alumni program. That gives them access to single game ticket discounts that come up. It gives them access to special events around young alumni. Uh, we don't have necessarily a season ticket discount for that group, but I, I think as we move into the stadium expansion, carving out some areas for young alumni with our expansion is something that we have on the radar along with increasing the number of student tickets. And so we think we can grow this program, but right now that's the best way. Rebels 25 is the best way for young alumni to, to really feel connected. And if, if you can't make every game, at least you can be a part of it. And this is a way for basically a little more than $2 a month you know, $25 a year to, to be involved uh, with our program. Yeah, to become a member. Right. I mean, it's a, at the rebel Absolutely. level, which is, which just, is and, and to say you're connected. Right. And that's what we've been asking people to do. Do whatever you can to say you're giving, to say you're connected. And this is, uh, you know, $25 to do that. So that question segues mm -hmm. into this one a little bit because you, you talked about expanding student seating. Right. And so um, uh, French um, wrote in a, a pretty lengthy uh, question. Uh, but I'll paraphrase mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. Really talking about, um, we all know we're, we're doing construction in the south end zone right. and, and then in the north end right. zone. So where do the students fall in this? And um, kind of give, yeah. give us a background on that. You know, when, when the stadium plan was announced in 2011, um, you know, the goals, premium seating, add capacity, and make the exterior look better. So all those things are still in play. But I think what we've done, I believe what we've done in, in our planning is really focused on a student experience, which I'm not sure was really part of the initial plan, is how do we maximize the student experience? We're over 19,000 on our campus. We only have 8,100 seats right now. And so right now we've really layered in goals to increase the student experience and add to the student experience more seats, actually bringing them closer to the field 
and giving them more opportunities, adding technology with uh, two new video boards, and actually taking our current video board and expanding the footprint of our current video board. So those are the things that are part of our planning. And later this year, later this fall, before the football season is over, we will announce the entire plan. We're working with student leadership groups right now to explain some different ideas that we have, some different proposals that we have uh, to reconfigure the student section, perhaps move it to a different location. And those ideas are all being met with uh, a lot of excitement. Uh, we're getting some new ideas from our student groups. And so what we're asking people right now is, is really stay tuned. But the goals of adding a student experience have been added to this plan that weren't there before. And we think we can really maximize you know, what it means to be an Ole Miss Rebel and come to football games. And that's what the goals are all about is give them their own entrance, give them concession areas, give them restrooms, give them their own section and really create some new traditions, and we think we can accomplish that with our stadium plan. And just hope that they are loud as could be. Absolutely. That's key. They are nucleus for this. Well, we saw that in the Alabama game. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what we're asking people to do is not come watch a game, come impact a game yeah. by cheering on first down, second down, third down when the land shark defense is on the field. And I think we have to educate and continue to hammer that message home you like that hammerhead shark? Yeah, I like that. Very nice. You know, hammer that home yeah. that you can impact the game. You're not just there to watch the game. You're right. there to impact the game, and our players feed off of that. And that's what we're looking for with this, uh, you know, student expansion and the entire stadium expansion. Yeah, that's the one unique thing now that you've just said that, that if you're watching in the Grove or you're watching at home on TV, which all of our games are on television, mm -hmm. um, you cannot impact the game. Like you, you, you're, you, are, right. you are not a participant in it. You're literally just a spectator. But when you come into Vaughn Hemingway Stadium, you can in some ways become a participant. Impact. I mean, you can impact it. When the game was tied and Alabama returned the kickoff and we fumbled, mm -hmm. when people saw that ball on the ground, the roar of the crowd was the loudest stadium that, that I've awesome. been in, even louder than Texas A&M. So what we have to do is take that moment and apply it across the board, consistent loudness, right? And a and consistent impact. We impacted the game. And that's what bowling in the north end zone will do. That's what adding some more student seats will do. And that's what we're after uh, with our stadium. So stay tuned later this fall, before the season's out, we will announce an entire stadium plan with the accurate picture of what it looks like. Not, not wishes, not a dream, but here's what's gonna be built. And what we also will provide is, he also mentioned that we should be up in the 70,000 range. We believe that a 64,000 range is better for us right now with the ability somewhere down the road to get to over 70,000. Right. And that's the key, flexibility. And we'll announce all those things later this fall. Good deal. Last question comes from Derek. Is the crowdfunding platform something Ole Miss plans to do um, more of in the future, specifically with the Forward Together campaign? So I'll ask you a question. Were we the first athletic department to use that model? I, be I believe in, so. In college athletics? Yeah, I believe right? so. So yes, the answer is yes. We will continue to do a lot of those features moving forward. The technology is terrific. Um, the folks who have that technology uh, love the fact that we were able to launch it on such a big platform, you know, right after the Alabama game. So it gives them a lot of uh, credibility that this sure. works. And we think it's a great model. Uh, whether it's large-scale fundraising or whether it's uh, you know one-off fundraising sure. like the Chucky e. Mullins uh, scholarship fund with the helmets or the goalposts or whatever it might be so we definitely plan to do that you know the forward together campaign right now we're after um, our, our large gifts and we think this will be a model where we can get everybody involved in the forward together campaign and so we'll definitely roll this out with some different ideas. Yeah, if we, you're not familiar with that. Yeah, if you're not familiar right. with that, it's um, ignite.olemiss.edu, ignite.olemiss.edu. You can see the uh, Chucky e. Mullins um, crowdfunder opportunity there now and, and can still give. So, um, well, thank you for being here. All right, thank you. Uh, stick around for a quick update on what's going around um, on campus and a special sneak peek of the season. So a special sneak peek of the season, which is our behind the scenes show uh, that gets better and better and better each week. Um, and we uh, hope you enjoy. We'll see you in two weeks on Studio 18 Live presented by Old Venice Pizza Company.
This week on campus, Friday night, the Ole Miss men's and women's hoops teams tip off their 2014-15 season with the most unique midnight madness experience in all of college basketball at Square Jam on the Oxford Square. The event follows the homecoming parade and is expected to begin around 6.30. Seating is limited, so arrive early. Saturday, your number three ranked Ole Miss Rebel football team hosts Tennessee at 6 p.m. Tickets are sold out. If you are needing tickets to the game, we encourage you to visit vividseat.com, the official ticket provider to Ole Miss Athletics. Don't forget to join the voice of the Rebels, David Kellum, and head coach Hugh Freeze at Buffalo Wild Wings every Thursday for our Coaches Show Rep Talk. Broadcast begins live at 7 p.m. Arrive early for best seating. For information on this and all other events, visit OleMissSports.com. For the first time since Johnny Vaught, a head coach has the Ole Miss Rebels. Many seasons have left Rebel fans in both triumph and heartbreak. But head coach Hugh Freeze has his team believing this season is the year the Rebels leave. Their mark. Thanks for taking some time for me tonight. I know you're busy, but um, what's practice and uh, you know the locker room like? What's the vibe? Uh, it's, it's, it's been pretty good, um, guys. The uh, focus has been really, really sharp. Um, I think we, I think we won the day today. Yeah, I mean, uh, somebody like yourself is from uh, Mississippi. I mean, just as far as what you can remember, what was the perception that kind of Ole Miss and Mississippi State in the SEC? I mean, as a recruit, um, it was different uh, because I knew. Uh, that I wasn't going to leave the state. It all wound up to, uh, you know, where was you more comfortable and, and you know, kind of what, what you thought might have fit best for you and your family. And, you know, ultimately I chose Ole Miss, and, um, I mean, every day I'm, I'm thankful that I made that decision. Right now everybody's paying attention to, to you guys. I mean, is that something you think as a recruit, having done that, that's important, that being able to see a, be on a big stage like this for Mississippi schools? Um, yes, I think so because, uh, when I when I signed here, me and uh, Dante and uh, Dante Moncrief and Aaron Morris, this is what we envisioned when we signed here to come play at Ole Miss. So, so now to just kind of see um, see it changing, you know, I mean, it, it really speaks on how far uh, Mississippi football has come. All right, CJ. Well, that's uh, that's all I had for you, but I appreciate you taking a few minutes and uh, good luck this weekend, man. Hope it's good. All right, appreciate it.